At the end of a stressful day, many like to wind down with a beer or maybe a glass of wine, but could that alcoholic drink increase your risk of cancer? The American Society for Clinical Oncology recently issued a warning of a connection between drinking alcohol and at least seven different types of cancer. And a lot of people probably read these headlines. They linked alcohol consumption to mouth and throat cancer, esophageal, laryngeal, liver, colon, rectal, and breast cancer. And of course, you read these headlines and it's alarming because obviously a lot of people do drink wine, drink spirits, well, drink beer. Well, you know, as a head and neck surgeon, I mean, we've known that, that head, head and neck cancer, cancers involving the oral cavity, the upper respiratory yeah. system is affected by alcohol. But what's, what's surprising to me is they're saying even with just one drink a day, it, it, the, yeah, it's got to be confusing for people. It's confusing for us because well, we're here. I, well, I think it's, it's very confusing. confusing. Yeah. And so when the American Society of Clinical Oncologists came out with this, they said even one drink a day can increase your risk of breast cancer by 5%, your mouth and throat cancer risk by 17%, your esophageal risk, which is from your mouth to your stomach, that too. 30%. And when I saw this headline, I got really scared. But I think it's important to put these things in context. And so I think sometimes when you read these headlines, it's really scary. But keep in mind, alcohol can be a tonic or a poison, and it all just depends on dose. So alcohol has been shown in a number of studies to actually decrease the risk of a number of issues like heart disease and type 2 diabetes and gallstones. But that's all with mild to moderate consumption. I think everybody agrees that yeah, heavy absolutely. alcohol use is bad. But interestingly, but and this is why this was to me cherry picking because light alcohol consumption has also been shown to reduce the risk of other cancers. And so what they did, which I, I look, I admire anytime you're going to raise red flags because I don't think anyone on this panel would say that problem drinking does not cause a host of medical issues. But I do worry when you cherry pick and then you say, okay, well, alcohol, light alcohol use leads to cancer, you should also say, well, light alcohol use in these studies also reduce the risk of other cancers. So just tell it all. You can't, you can't just tell half the story. What, what's your and read on this? My, my read is a moderation in everything. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? And then, and I mean, there are, are you th surprised, though, that, that even drinking a small amount I'm, put I'm, you at I am greater surprised. risk for esophageal cancer? Yes, I am, you, I am surprised. Which you deal with? I, I am surprised. And, and I can't tell you the last time I, I saw esophageal cancer. It's that rare. Well, so it's I, more likely for And that's a really that's good point. point. So yeah. if you have right? a, and so this is important, when you look at the numbers, if, if you have a 30% increased risk of esophageal cancer, well, and I don't know the statistics, right. what, what, one in how many? Right, let's say one from two to three. Right, exactly. From two, from two so cases to three cases. Out of? Out of tens of thousands that you look right. at. Right, so you, yeah. you, have to, you have to put the whole picture together and also know that when we say light drinking, one drink, that's, that's four and a half ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, I think one and a half ounces of, of spirits. Most people, what they consider to be light drinking is probably more like moderate drinking. And that's why I well, don't that, mind these headlines. my experience. The, I, the, the guys with head and neck cancer, I mean, you know, when, when asked about their drinking history, you're talking about heavier alcohol, you know, much stronger proof that over time is going to be much more irritating to those cells, which are then going to change and become cancer. And, and Plus, there are other factors, that, excuse that, me, that they yeah. didn't separate. Are they smoking? Is well, there a well, genetic predisposition? Poor well, oral I think, hygiene. I think exactly. They did, well, I HPV. Think they tried to look systematically. I think this is the first time it's interesting that the American Society of Clinical Oncologists has even weighed in and said that looking at all of these studies, there is actually enough proof to suggest causality. But when you start to see these headlines and you think about it with respect to your own health, I think it's really important to think about your own personal genetic family history. Mm -hmm. So if you have a very strong history of breast cancer, that 5% increase may be really relevant mm -hmm. to you. Right. But if you have a very strong family history of heart disease, then maybe having that one glass of wine yeah, is much more important. Yeah. So, so I think you have to take these things in context. And I think everybody agrees that heavy drinking is very dangerous. Yes. Yes. But I think where that mild, maybe moderate consumption really falls with respect to your own health and your own risk is, is very different because some people feel like the social aspect of alcohol really helps in terms of longevity and mental acuity. There are a lot of health benefits to mild drinking as well. So it's, I it's think it's just to too easy that. sometimes in medicine to label something as good or bad. Right. Yeah. And if, when, you, when you cherry pick and you make a decision, okay, I'm gonna write an article or do a study and I'm gonna label this as bad, and then someone else says, well, I'm gonna label it as good. That's when the headlines 
can become so very confusing.